All right, y'all, so today what we're gonna talk about is what I think is the best pedal-powered tournament kayak setup out there. So when you're talking about the best of anything, you can go 100 different directions with it. But I'm gonna tell you why I think my Big Water PDL from Old Town is the best setup out there for me and hopefully for a lot of you guys uh, as well. All right, so before we do the walkthrough, I'll run through a few highlights of why I think it's uh, the best tournament setup you can get from a pedal powered kayak. Uh, number one, the hull design handles flat water, big water, wind, waves, whatever you can throw at it. And out of the hole, if you're trying to cover a lot of water on tournament day, I mean, the name of the game is more casts. Uh, it's probably the fastest pedal drive boat out there stock. You can add some things to some other boats to pick up some speed, but stock, this one is, is extremely quick out of the hole for a kayak. They're all fairly slow relatively, but for a kayak, you're gonna cover more water and get, your, get to your spot faster in this boat. Number two, the drive. Uh, it's a maintenance-free drive with cheap replacement parts. You can, you can have extra props, extra prop pins, extra uh, latches that hold the drive down on hand for just a few dollars. Easy to replace on the water. And on top of that, it just doesn't break down. I mean, it does not break down with the consistency or frequency of the other brand's drives. So reliability in a tournament situation, you can't say enough about that. Number three, you, the ability to accessorize this thing without having to drill into it. It's got slide track areas built into the side plates, the mounting plates all around the boat. And even if you do drill into the, the mounting plates, you can replace the mounting plates for just a few bucks, but you don't even have to. There's tracks built into them. Um, you can run wires up onto the hatch, down into the transducer scupper, all the way to the back of the boat uh, through the hatch in the, near, the, near the back without having to do anything. You don't have to drill any holes in your boat if you don't want to. So a lot of options there. Uh, you can even run wires out the back drain plug and mount your transducer off the back behind the rudder if you'd like to. I already mentioned speed of this boat, but it's also a very, very stable boat. I'm a tall guy and I can stand up and fish easily in the Big Water PDL. And, and last but not least, before we get to the walkthrough, I'm a hoarder of tackle. I carry way too much stuff. And I can carry a big crate with 10 rod holders on it with another, other rod holders in the, the flush mount rod holders that come with it. Stuff under the seat, put stuff inside the hole from, via the front hatch. So there's just a lot of stuff this boat can carry without slowing it down. So with that said, let's get to the walkthrough. All right, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of the boat. We're going to start up here. As always, the molded in handle on these big water and prior generation Predator boats. Mounting plates on both sides of the kayak you can take off and as you can see from my depth finder we'll get to that in a minute i got it wired underneath the plates run into a unit on that side but we'll do that in just a minute built-in track mounts in the slide plates on the side i've got a yak gadget um, paddle holder but i'm using it to hold a net that's an ego easy slider another accessory from yak gadget that's kind of new into the slide track there is this uh river stick or not power pole, but stakeout mount. I've got a piece of conduit in there to kind of show you how it works. And I can use this in some soft bottom situations to go straight through this, uh, this hole in the mount in the track and it'll hold me in place on soft bottom areas if I'm trying to sight fish or just don't want to get blown around. Um, it's a little flexible, but it does a good job. Not quite as good as a single position power pole in the back, but it does a fine job holding you in at least in the general area there front facing rod holder on this side solid handle mount uh, on the side of the boat here some of the aftermarket parts i added to this tournament setup this year these are from yak hobby they are screw on uh, accessory mounts for your seat you can see there i've got a robohawk tether attached to that where you can tether items and what i've got a tether to that is my metal catch board if you get clumsy with that thing you can drop it and sink it in a heartbeat because it obviously doesn't float cup holder with a cut through drain area so it doesn't hold water All right here's the rudder deployment handle lift that up you see the rudder going up and down there rod holders on both sides flush mount more plates with slide track installed here in the back i've got a uh, cabela's brand scotty mount Hold an additional rod or net or whatever you want to put in there. Here's my tournament crate. I use a traditional crate. I've been through every kind of store-bought crate you can buy, uh, pre, kind of pre-made specific crates. But I just went back to a store-bought crate with 10 rod holders. I got a video on that. Holds my rods real nice. Recently, I switched to Temple Fork Outfitters or TFO rods. I can go over another video on that at another time. The Old Town seat is super comfortable. 
I add this Samsonite uh, seat back pad. It's like 10 bucks at a at a uh, TJ Maxx or Target or whatever. You can either flip that and sit on it or use it for a lumbar support, which is what I do. There's the rudder set up in the back. Below the rudder, that's a mount for a power pole. If you put a power pole on there, you can just deploy the, store the rudder in the upward position like that. Power pole, power pole deploys between the uh, rudder cables right there. And that's reinforced and ready to mount. For travel, you can just take your bungee and clip it. Drain plug in the back, of course, if you're gonna travel with a long load, you gotta have a red flag. Coming down this side, you can see the other, can see the other plate that's got the cut slide tracks. Get a little better view of my tournament crate. I run a simple GoPro setup. Just an old GoPro session that lasts all day long during the tournament day with an external battery right there, just twist it onto the monopod, just a cheap monopod, and it fits right in the flush mount. Boat comes standard with a paddle clip on the side. And I've got an additional security of a Robohawk um, leash clipped on. And there's another one of those Yak Hobby seat clips with the, uh, with the carabiner clipped onto it. The go-to paddle is the Carlisle Magic Angler. This is a camo one that matches the boat. This boat is Marsh Camo, which is my favorite color in the lineup. Here's the steering control. There's a tension knob on here where you can lock that down to keep from maneuvering on you. And Yakabi, another Yakabi product. I'm not affiliated or sponsored with them in any way, but uh, they make an aftermarket steering handle. I like that. On the front of the seat, that's a lot brighter at night, but that, that's a uh, night eyes light that goes on the front of a your handlebars for a bike, but it makes a handy little light in the dark if you're out there trying to rig or do whatever. On the front of every boat, I've got this Yak gear, yak sack that travels between every boat I have. Love this thing. Holds uh, pliers, scissors, soft plastics in the middle. I've got some super glue in there. Some mend it in case I run out of certain soft plastics. I can fix them up. There's storage under the seat. I've got a leader line, some other tools, some spike it markers, stuff like that, just under the seat. And then completely under the seat, there's room to store things. That's where I keep all my soft, soft plastics. Looking at the drive system, the PDL drive is the most reliable drive on the market. I went with another aftermarket part, which is I replaced the, the uh, wing nut that holds the prop on with, with this uh, Yakabi piece that's cone shaped. I don't know if that adds any kind of aerodynamic action to it or not, but I like the fact that number one, it floats and it uh, is easy to twist on and off with your hand. I run the PDL with one-way scuppers some fishing line in that one but these allow water to drain out but nothing to come up through the scupper holes keeps you from losing tungsten or whatever else you might be rigging all the old town boats come with these breakaway clamps i mean they're solid but if you ram something these are designed to break so that you uh, don't damage the drive especially in the middle of an event i'm still running a hummingbird helix 7 side imaging unit a mega side imaging unit i've ordered a helix 9 with the possibility of adding the mega live to it but we don't have that available, it's back ordered. Just got that on a Ram electronics mount. We've got another Railblazer starport here where I can add an additional camera mount. And I've got that additional boom, camera boom right there under this bungee next to the seat where I could uh, put my phone up if I was trying to go live and talk to the camera or something like that. Here in the front, I have a Railblazer starport mounted to the other side plate. It's got a phone holder on it so I can take some some hero shots or whatever out there. It's got another GoPro mount on it. And then I've got a Robohawk leash on there to leash my phone, GoPro, whatever, so I don't knock it off and knock it in the water. Two more clamps to hold the drive in. PDL drive, fantastic, no maintenance drive. And it is, you know, one of the main reasons I love this as a tournament setup and call it the best tournament setup is it's reliable. Last thing you need is to have something break on you in a tournament. And this thing takes a beating super reliable it's maintenance free you don't have to take it apart grease it anything like that uh, it just keeps on trucking year after year for you these are from navarre kayak fishing these are spacers that keep your drive perfectly centered there's some aligners on there to, to do that where you know you, you can eyeball it and do it but these even if your knobs that hold the uh even if the knobs come loose that hold your drive in place on that bar these spacers will not let it shift around and keep it perfectly centered which makes it easier to pedal puts less tension on the whole setup 
a little smoother smoother operation there i just leave the the stock pedals on there you can replace these with with aftermarkets if you want we'll go underneath you can see where the transducer stored the transducer tucks up nicely under the hull uh, i've been running that same trans transducer for a couple years and it's still in great shape because it does not take a beating you just got to be mindful if you're dragging it up on rocks or something that rocks don't get up under there but just in general floating pedaling whatever it just doesn't get hit so here you can see a little bit of the design of the hull and why this thing's called the big water it takes wind big waves uh, with no problem without trying to roll you it literally will will bob in the in the big waves and water like a like a bobber would rather than a piece of wood it doesn't want to tip over it just rides those waves or if you're pointed into them bust right through uh, heavy chop another aftermarket accessory is this navarre kayak fishing uh, measuring board scupper mount and all that does you kind of get an eye, eye on that there you can store your board in a upright position it doesn't let it does let it fall down and you can just take it out of there and put it there when you want to measure a fish but keeps it handy and accessible and flat up against the side of your boat so you can still stand up move around and not uh, worry about fumbling around with your board on both sides of the kayak we got po side pockets for storage just got some soft plastics in there but you can put whatever you want in there on this side i've got a little plastic container where i can throw crankbaits spinnerbaits whatever and just pull them out all my cutoffs out at the end of the day and throw them on the table also on my board i keep a extra tourney tag in case I ever lose the one I'm using on tournament day, I can have a backup right there. You can just flip it around and leave it on top of your mounting plate. All right, let's go inside the hole. Front hatch, big front hatch held on by a bungee. Just unclip that. See the hatch has a rubber gasket inside of it. Along with where it goes down, there's a big raised lip. What that's going to do between the gasket and the raised lip, as you're taking water, if you're out in big ways and chop, it's going to just hit this, run off, and go out the transducer scupper area big storage inside the hole i've put three to four rods easily in there uh, i've got a dry bag in there with some emergency equipment uh, my rain my rain gears in there i carry some some additional tackle boxes in here and then you can see there's the wiring for the battery for the the helix 7 just goes in this battery bag plugs in up and out of the way doesn't ride on the bottom and get beat up and you can zip that up and store it uh, securely all right there you have it guys with the big water pdl the best pedal powered kayak for tournament fishing out there in my opinion uh, let me know what yours is or if you have a big water pdl what do you think of yours uh, put it in the comments as always appreciate y'all watching don't forget to hit that little bell before you get out of here thank y'all